there folks just out doing some work on Danny's bike at the moment um, I'm going to be lowering it the factory way now Danny's bike is already lowered um, we bought this second hand it was six months old and the previous person had it lowered at the dealership now the dealership did the shortcut way of lowering it um, which is quick and easy but it does have some issues um, if you lower it the quick and easy way your suspension still has full travel yet you've got less ground clearance so what can happen in an extreme circumstance is the sump can hit the ground and the rear tyre could hit the underside of your wheel arch. Now that'd be, in the worst case, that's what would happen, which is obviously not very good. If you lower your DR the factory way, you can lower it 40 millimetres. Uh, you do re reduce your suspension travel by that as well, um, so you've always got ground clearance. There's a few ways to tell if your bike's been lowered correctly or not. I would imagine if you paid a dealer to do it, most of them would do it incorrectly. My bike I bought second hand as well and the same dealer lowered that bike and it was also done incorrectly. Now I would imagine the dealer would charge full price for this and yet they're still doing it the shortcut way. So today I'm going to show you how to do it the correct way. Uh, it doesn't, I'm not, I've never done it before but hopefully it doesn't take too long. You've got to strip the forks and turn the collar around on the rear shocky. I'll have quickly show you how a quick telltale sign if you can tell if your bike's been lowered dodge away or not. Quick and dirty way of telling is if your forks are through the triple trees. Your forks should be flush with the top of the triple trees. This is the quick way they do it, they just drop your forks down in the triple trees. Obviously that's not right. What we need to do next is to remove the wheel and remove the forks and then we'll strip the insides out. Now that wheel is super easy to remove. Slacken the four 10 mils here and then it's a 19 mil axle comes out and the wheel slides off. And because I'm balancing that on a wee jack there, I'm just going to get a log of wood put under there just to stop it from tipping because it is kind of dodgy. So I've just put a piece of wood under there, just in case it falls, it can't go too far. Um, ideally, you should have some kind of a jack to properly lift it, but I don't have that, so just got to make do with what I've got. Right, next up, you want to remove your caliper and... your wee clamps there off the forks. Now I'm going to take the bolt out, I'm just going to put it back in where it came from so it doesn't get lost. So there's a Phillips on this side, 10 mil on that side. This just takes your hose guides off. Two 12 mils and your calipers off. Next up you've got four Allen key bolts up here. Now you don't have to remove them all the way. I'm going to remove this side all the way just to free this caliper up and then all I'm going to do is just hang it on top of the bars there 
just so there's no weight hanging on the, the actual caliper itself. And then I'll just nick these wee bolts back in a wee bit. Slack into the other side. And all you've got left is the 14 up top. Now, those forks will just slide right out. And there we have it. Now, if you didn't, if you don't have an impact gun, slacken this big 22 mil before you take them out the clamps. It's just it's very tight, and you can't get any leverage on it. Right, I'm just going to work out, work on one fork at a time, just to so I know where everything goes. First up, I'm going to remove this boot, just so I can get out of the way. What I'm going to do next, before I go any further, is just clean this fork tube up. Um, as we will be going up and down with the tube, and we've got the internals out, um, I just want to make sure there's no dirt and shit gets on that seal. So, all I've got is some brake cleaner. And a rag. Uh, next up, I just want to slacken this top nut. See, that was pretty tight, so if you didn't have an impact gun, um, do it on the bike. And before we take this right out, we want to turn it upside down and slacken that Allen key in the bottom there. Okay, so I'm going to put some pressure on this and try and slacken it at the same time. There we go. You've got this Allen key bolt and there should be a copper washer there as well. Don't lose that. I'll take the top cap off and have a wee look. Right. So up top you've got your spacer. This is the component that we need to change. So this is a confirmation that it's not been done right. You've got your spacer, you've got a wee washer, and you've got your spring. So this is what's in the bottom here. Uh, this is your damper damper rod, I think is what it's called. Um, so this sits down in the fork and it's threaded in the bottom, that's where that bolt goes through. And that there is what we're trying to tighten again. See, it's like a, I think it's like a 27 or 30 mil multi-spline bit. Um, you can, you do get, obviously you get a tool that fits in there and you can make one. Um, however, I've never had an issue before using an impact driver. The only issue is you can't torque it. But again, I've never had a problem with that. I've done heaps of forks. I just um, put a bit of Loctite on that bolt. And away we go. Now I'll pop up a picture on the screen of the factory serviced manual. 
and in it you'll see that we take the big preload spacer from the top and we put it to the bottom. Let's fit it in here like that. Slide this into it here. bolt. Like I said, I can't torque this, um, so I'm just going to put some Loctite on it and zip it up with the gun. Then I'll just put my spring in and my top cap on. just so I can nip this bolt up in the bottom and then we'll remove the spring and put some oil on it. So again, put a heap of pressure down. And there you go. That'll be tight enough. Now the manual states 560 millilitres of oil, 10 weight oil. So this is what I'm using, it's just Penrite's 10 weight oil. This is a litre bottle, so I'll put roughly half of it in there. Let's cycle this up and down a few times just to get the oil all the way through. Now to set the fork oil level you need to have the fork fully compressed to spring removed and you set it to 150 milliliters. Now I don't have any fancy tool for doing this so all I've got is a bit of hose here. I'm going to measure 150 I'm going to try and strain it up first. I mean, this is a DR, it's not, you don't have to be bang on perfect, but the closer you can get it, the better it will be. And stick a cable tie around it. So that's all I'm using there. So it's 150 millimeters from there to the end of the cable tie. Stick this in and hold it so it's kind of straight and and try and suck some oil out. I can't suck any oil out so well, just at the very top, you could hear it gurgle in there. So that level is spot on perfect. And I only got a wee bit of oil out of my, in my mouth. Now the, the spring does have an orientation as well. If you can see, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but the pitches are tighter, tightly, more tightly wound on this end here than this end here. So the tightly wound pitch goes to the top. And set that. And then you've got your washer. Which goes on top. And then your fork cap. Uh, so that's this one fork built up. If we compare it to standard height one. There you go. There's your height difference there. Now I can now set this to the top of the trough clamps and that's how you factory lower your DR650 suspension, front suspension. Um, I'm just going to do the same to this side and then we'll put them back on the bike. Right, just before we go to the back, that's everything on and tightened up now. Um, just a wee tip for you guys, if whatever you're doing, 
I always just touch every single bolt that I've taken off and put back on and just say tight. So I go tight, 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 axles tight, brake calipers are tight, hose is tight, that hose is tight, that's tight, 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 and tight the two top clamp bolts. If you do that, you won't forget anything. Um, it's so easy to strip something, rebuild it. Somebody comes and asks you a question or the missus wants you to come in for your tea, you go back out and you've completely forgotten and you leave something slack. So if you just go over and touch everything that you've touched, give everything a wee wiggle, you should surely not miss anything. Right, that's the front all done. Oh, that's taken me just over an hour to do it, including filming. Um, I did have the wee impact gun, which made the process a lot quicker. So if you didn't have that, you could maybe allow yourself an hour and a half to do the front. Uh, it's super easy, nothing technical, really. Um, there's not really any excuse for somebody doing it the shortcut. I mean, if you want to do it the shortcut, that's fair enough. Um, my bike was done the shortcut way as well, just lowering the triples, and the rear was done the shortcut. But I raised mine back up because it was too too low for me, um, which was good for me because it only took five minutes to raise it back up instead of a couple of hours. But if you're paying a garage to do it, you would make sure, just double check their work and make sure they've done it right. Uh, right, let's go and have a look at the back and we'll see if we can get that done. Right guys, this is the back suspension here, the lower linkage. And if you see this bolt here, it's in the top hole, there's two holes. So this is currently in the lowered position for the bolt. Um, so if you want to do the shortcut way, just jack it up, swap that bolt around. Um, however, there is a collar in there, which you cannot really see on the bottom of the bump stop, and it needs to be turned around as well. Um, otherwise, you've still got your suspension travel, but you don't have the ground clearance. So what we are going to do is slacken off the spring, hopefully slide the spring up and take this collar off in place without removing the shock absorber. I'm hoping we can do it this way which saves a lot of hassle. Right, so I'll just um, lift the bike back up again and get the rear wheel off the ground. So up the top of the, the shock area, you can see like a weak collar. Two collars, one top, one bottom there. I don't know if you can really see that very well. Anyway, I'm gonna to need to slacken these both off to slide the spring up. Um, you do get a C-spanner that will fit that, but obviously you can't get that in there. Uh, so I've got a bit of flat bar stock, I'm just gonna chop it around and hope it works. I just brought that top one up. Now that the top one's slack, you can usually turn the bottom one with the spring all together so I'm just grabbing the bottom of the spring and rotating it and just turning the whole thing up. Now, as you can see I've screwed those collars right way up there so I can move the spring up and down and now hopefully we can get this collar off underneath. Now all you do is lift the bump stop up. You really cannot see there and remove this spring seat on the bottom. See, this has got slotted on it, so all you do is lift it up, and that'll slide out and down. And you see this is the way it comes out of factory. This is the way it needs to go in at the lowered position. And if you look in there, it's um, got a depression where the bump stop sits in there. Um, if you look at that from underneath, you'll see whether that ridge is down or up. Um, that's easy to tell. You also get this plate here which covers the bolt that you need to move um, it's just been bent out of the way to get that bolt in to do it the shortcut way and um, so we'll just take this off and chuck this because it's not needed and all you do is just refit this upside down right now we're going to set the right now we're going to set the spring preload now to do that we just tighten this um, one of those top collars there just that the lower one now 
the softest setting for this is 253.5 millimeters, and that's the length of the spring. The standard is 247, and the stiffest, I think it was around 243. Um, I'm going to set this somewhere between the softest and the standard. It's probably around about 258 millimeters. I'll try and set it towards. So I've screwed that down as far as I can with my fingers. I'll just take a measurement here, if I can. This is going to be awkward. And to the bottom we are at about 244. That's pretty bloody awkward to get out there. Um, ideally you should take the, spring, the shocky out to do that, but I'm not going to bother with that. You can get a good bit of preload on these, just with the weight off and turning the spring. Because I stiffened mine right up and I didn't remove it. That's about 250 millimetres. And then run the, the collar down, the locking ring at the top. Now I'll just get dying to try this and if I need to stiffen up a little bit more, it just takes five minutes. I'll give you a wee look at the that bottom collar from underneath now. It's hard to show on video, but you can see the lip there. Which means it's in the lowered position. Now, if your bike was in the high position originally, uh, you just swap that bottom shock bolt out now, which you can do again just from the other side of the bike. You don't have to take the shocky off or anything. Just move that from the bottom hole to the top hole and fit a shorter side stand. You can either cut the one you've got or Suzuki do sell a, a shorter side stand to go with it. Um, so this is the factory way to do it. I would recommend doing it this way over the other way. However, if you want to do the other way first and see what you think, whether you want it lowered or not, it takes five minutes to reverse. But as you've seen there, the front took me what, just over an hour and the back 15, 20 minutes at most. And this is the first time I've done it. So it's super simple to do. There's really not an excuse. Um, if you've paid someone to do it, double check. It's easy to check and Make sure they have done it right. Because if you do hit a big bump and they've done it wrong, you could technically bottom out the bike and cause yourself an accident. Right, folks, that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. I hope you learned something. Um, I did. I reckon that was super easy. Um, make sure and hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. And thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you in the next one. See you.